Hi, I'm Pilgrim Beard from Device Pilot, and today I'm going to talk about who will win the race, differentiating your service in an oversaturated EV charging market. So first we deployed dumb things. Now we're making them smart. EV charging, smart meters, smart batteries, they're all examples of smart energy. What makes smart energy smart? Well, to be smart, a device must contain embedded software, and it must have connectivity. These are the two transformative technologies. But they both add significant complexity and cost, so it's reasonable to ask, why bother? Well, it's because you're not actually selling a thing, you're selling a service. Driving your car from A to B, heating and lighting your house, washing and drying your clothes at the cheapest cost. It's that service that your customers are depending on. It's that service that they're paying you to deliver. So what can go wrong? Well, software and connectivity make things smart. And smart enables remote control, live billing, all the things that make your service work. But it also makes your devices complex, potentially unreliable, and expensive to maintain. And the real world is an uncontrolled and messy place where everything that can happen will happen. So if your device is supposed to be online, sometimes it will be offline. It will be misconfigured. There will be hardware bugs. There may be electrical problems. There will be software bugs. Some devices might even be running the wrong version of software. There will be security issues that you'll have to fix. Devices can be tampered with. And any smart device has some level of complexity, so you need to be tracking whether users are actually able to understand how to use it and to get the service that they're buying. These are all just facts of life for smart energy. And if anything, they're getting more critical because innovations like demand response are making smart energy part of our critical national infrastructure. So what we need is a way to prevent these issues from stopping us delivering a great service to our customers. In the early days of smart energy, our customers were early adopters. They were excited by new technologies and tolerant when things didn't work as expected. But now smart energy is used by mainstream customers who won't tolerate a service which works just, who need it to just work each time, every time, entirely dependably. When was the last time a petrol pump didn't work? When was the last time an EV charger didn't work? Running smart energy systems is hard. So how can we drive up service quality, even as our estate of EV chargers and other smart energy devices is rapidly growing from thousands to millions? Well, let's take a quick look at the architecture. First, the service components. We've got the hardware itself, the firmware that runs on the hardware, the network that connects it to the internet and the cloud. And each of these needs managing. So you have device management, which does things like upgrade your firmware and, and provide security. You've got network management, things like SIM provisioning. And of course, your actual application, your charge point management system or meter data management system. Meanwhile, you're running your business with applications like Salesforce, Zendesk, SAP, maybe Power BI for analytics, Slack to keep in touch. And this leaves us with a bit of a problem. Those service components don't really give you the big picture of what's going on across your entire estate. So what has your device uptime been for each customer over the last week? How well is this site doing versus that? Will you meet your customer service level agreements this month? And your business applications, which sort of are good at giving you a big picture, don't understand the telemetry streams that are coming from your devices. So the, there's a missing piece here, the phishing net from our previous picture. And that missing piece is service monitoring. It streams data from all the layers below and transforms it into metrics and actions in your business applications so that you can deliver excellent service quality. Service monitoring manages incidents, performance and SLAs to deliver exceptional service, basically because you keep your customers happy, rapid growth by stopping your team from firefighting, and revenue protection, which comes partly from keeping your customers happy so they go on paying you, but also partly from making your team more efficient and therefore making your company more profitable. Which is why a key aspect of service monitoring is to make everything as automated as possible. 
Let's explore those three pieces of service monitoring. As you scale, so does your number of incidents. You need to become proactive in dealing with them. Build a process to automate your response to maybe 80% of them, so your ops team has time to deal with the remaining 20%. Transform the stream of device telemetry into metrics and events, prioritise them according to business goals, then drive business actions to resolve them, automatically if possible. Performance management operates at a slightly higher level. It asks the question, is my device estate ready to deliver my business today? Let's consider a customer-focused KPI such as per-site availability. So for example, if you're deploying your charges in clusters such as car parks, then as a customer, if I drive into a car park, what's my chance of getting a charge? That's a really customer-oriented way to think. Well, if, we, if there are three charges in a car park and one of them's broken, is that a problem? Well, not necessarily if right next to it is a working charger that's available. So as a customer, I'm happy. Equally, if all the charges are working so there's no technical problem, but they're all in use, then as a customer, I can't charge my car right now. So there is a problem. And this helps to illustrate the difference between technical metrics like uptime, which would say that that second case was perfectly good, and business metrics like site availability, which are much more customer centric. Performance management is all about steadily driving up customer satisfaction. And as you get bigger, customers will start to insist on service level agreements, SLAs. And you can't just report that you missed last month's SLA. You need to proactively manage to hit this month's SLA by intelligently prioritizing incident resolution to maximize outcomes. But first, you have to win those contracts. And confidence in your ability to deliver quality can help you to win competitive contracts by agreeing to a tough SLA that you know you can deliver. Service monitoring is a tool which weaves all of this into a workflow used every day by customer services, operations, and even product managers and others who need to know what's going on with service delivery. So why does all this matter now? Well, new technologies like EV charging always grow with an S-shaped curve. Initially, growth is slow because the technology has teething troubles and only early adopters are interested. Then growth accelerates as the majority customer engages. And finally, you reach market saturation. We can see that in the EU, smart meters are in the middle to late part of their S curve, whereas EV charging, thanks to various recent acquisitions, IPOs, and now Joe Biden, is just moving into its rapid growth phase. For example, Shell is growing from 60,000 chargers today to 2.5 million by 2030. When you get this kind of growth, it becomes a race to see who can own the market by the time it saturates. So how to win? Well, to win the race, you certainly do have to deploy a lot of new charging points. But when we speak to successful EV charging companies, they all agree it's not enough just to deploy. It's about growing service adoption. So that means you need to deploy with quality to drive adoption. So customers use you, they come to rely on you as a dependable service. You also need to deploy with efficiency, because if you're going to grow your charge point estate by a factor of 10 or more, you can't grow your team by a factor of 10 or more. Even if you could afford to hire all those people, continuing to do things manually will not deliver a great customer experience. And it also makes it really hard to become profitable. You need a tool to leverage the team you already have, enabling them to drive up quality and efficiency even while you grow fast. Service monitoring is that tool, bringing quality and efficiency to your charge point service. A great example is PodPoint, a device pilot service monitoring customer for more than three years. They used device pilot initially to create metrics to identify, characterize, and fix faults quickly, improving technical delivery, and building an efficient operations process. Then with performance management, PodPoint won business against stiff competition by offering tough SLA guarantees. And by integrating with Salesforce, device pilot has allowed PodPoint to optimize their business processes. The result is very rapid growth, while driving service quality up to 99% and beyond, even while keeping operational costs firmly under control. That's all from me. Thank you very much for listening.